Hello and welcome to FTL Faster Than Light. This is a very good game that I've played a whole bunch in the past, and I have a recent desire to pick it up again and play me some FTL. To that end, I'm going to start up a brand new save file and everything. I will be playing on hard mode and with the AE content enabled. In FTL, you play as the captain of a Federation cruiser. The Federation is a human-alien alliance, coalition, peacekeeping body, whatever, that is currently in the midst of a civil war. The Rebellion is a humans-only group that believe in human superiority and are not particularly fond of the aliens in the FTL universe. The Rebellion has nearly won the civil war, but you have information vital to the survival of the Federation that can turn the tide of the war. You are being hunted by a rebel fleet led by a flagship of unbelievable strength, and you must fly through eight sectors filled with pirates, mercenaries, and rebel fighters in order to reach the last bastion of the Federation fleet and make your last stand. We will play this round as the Federation cruiser the Kestrel because that is the only ship that is unlocked. We have three crew. Liu Jun, uh, which I'm going to pronounce terribly, Will, which I can pronounce that relatively okay, and Dolan. We have two weapons, the Artemis Missile Launcher and the Burst Laser Mark II. Missiles can bypass any shields that an enemy ship has, but they do require ammunition to fire. Lasers have to blast their way through enemy shields before they can deal damage, but they can be used indefinitely, infinitely, without any ammunition source. Our ship has the following systems and subsystems. A shield system that has two power. Two power in the shields equals one bar of shields, but we can upgrade it during the game as you can see on the right. For a total of 50 scrap, we could get another shield bar. Our engines also have two power in them, providing a base 10% dodge chance for any incoming enemy projectile and a slightly faster FTL recharge speed. Your FTL recharge speed allows you to more easily flee from combat that might otherwise get you killed. The oxygen system only has one power, but that is enough to keep our ship supplied. Our weapon system has three power, which is needed for our weapons. The Artemis uses one power and the burst laser uses two, so we do have enough to keep both weapons online at the same time. But we can always upgrade this weapon system in the future to allow for a greater capacity. The med base starts at level one, which is enough for most situations but we might want to consider upgrading that early in the campaign. The piloting system starts at level one, but if we upgraded it in the future, we gain the ability for the ship's computer to pilot for us without needing a crew member sitting in the chair. Sensors are at level one and allow us to see within our own ship. If we were to upgrade this system or staff it with a crew member, we could see inside the enemy ship as well. And the door system also starts at level 1, granting us the crucial ability of opening and closing our doors. We have to upgrade the door system so that they are resistant to invaders. This is our ship, and we must fly it through 8 sectors of hostile space to reach our destination and save the Federation. Let's just jump in and see how far we can go on this run of FTL. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip fuel. Every jump consumes one unit of fuel. We start with 16. You can see the icon right under our hull gauge on the top left. So keep an eye on your reserves. Buy fuel at stores to avoid being left stranded. Press 1 or click continue to continue. So this is our ship. We have, uh, I'm just going to call him June. This is a him. There are separate male and female avatars. So this is a, a male. June is in the piloting system. Dolan is in the weapon system. And Will is in the engine system. By staffing these systems, we can get bonuses to them. So for example, we currently have a 15% evasion chance for enemy projectiles. If I move Will outside of the engine room, we only have a 10% dodge now. If I mouse over his skills, if I put him in the piloting, piloting room, we get plus 5 dodge. Or if I put him in the engine room, we also get plus 5 dodge. If I move the pilot out of the piloting room, 
since no one's piloting the ship, we are just adrift. We have 0% evasion chance. But if I put people on their respective stations, we get 15% evasion chance. I can power up the engines to get even more evasion chance. So now, if I put some power into the engine, this is our reactor here on the left, we have a 20% chance to dodge now. But you may notice that we do not have the weapons currently online. But I don't have the power to keep both weapons online unless I depower something else. I only have a limited supply of power right now. We don't need a med bay, we're not hurt, so if I depower the med bay, I can power up the weapon systems so that we have them charged and ready for combat. We have 16 fuel, 8 missiles, 2 drone parts. We can get more fuel, missiles, drone parts, and scrap just by fighting, doing, uh, you know, beacons, doing events, and getting rewards from those events. We have one bar of shields, and I think that's about it. We have a door system. We can man someone on the door system, and then we have these invader-resistant doors. They have to actually burst through the doors. They have to attack the doors for a while before they can move into uh, any adjacent rooms. Otherwise, these orange doors that you see here on our ship, they can just free anyone can freely walk through them. My own crew or enemy crew. So if I look at the beacon map here, we have the exit. The exit's in a nebula, and we have a distress beacon and two beacons that have no identifiers. We can jump to whichever beacon we want. Usually the distress beacons have something guaranteed. A uh, unmarked beacon might have something, or it might have nothing. And we have to make it to the exit alive and before the rebels get there. We want to visit as many beacons as possible before we get to the exit. I find that the greatest indicator of success in FTL is how many beacons can you get to, because the more beacons you go to, the more rewards you can get. So. Why don't we start by just going to the Distress Beacon. We have a lot of paths we can follow from this beacon. We can go up, we can go down, we can go through the nebula. Why don't we just jump straight to the Distress Beacon so we have something immediately that we can do. It appears the Distress Beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Your sensors are picking up a single life form. We can investigate or we can ignore the, the we can investigate or we can ignore the signal. I'm going to investigate. You find a man living alone in a cave. From the appearance of his wrecked ship, it seems he's been here for many years. He looks unhealthy, but his mental state is questionable. We can bring him back to the ship, or we can leave the madman to his ravings. Let's bring him back to the ship. <sighs> Once back in orbit, the man turns increasingly violent. Eventually, he turns on your crew and manages to kill one before you can subdue him. And June is now dead. Yep, we have just lost our first crew member in FTL. The first beacon of the first jump of the first episode has killed a man. And now we are left with only Will and Dolan. That's okay, we can get crew members back. If I was not recording, I would probably just immediately restart this run because that's kind of bullshit. There was nothing I could do about that, but I will persevere. I think we can come back from that. It's just one bad encounter. I think I'm going to go down, around, and then up into the nebula. We have plenty of time. We've just started this sector, sector one, civilian sector. Should be pretty easy. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get in at this beacon. Hopefully no one dies. You tune in and listen for anything interesting on the un unencrypted chatter between ships. It seems they need to take possession of an enemy ship intact. Offer your, our services. We are not properly equipped for this mission. We don't have a teleporter. We don't have a weapon that can kill crew or anything. That's what they're trying to do. So we just we just have to leave them, basically, so we don't get anything out of that beacon either. And this is a terrible start for an FTL run, but again, I'm just going to persevere. Hey, we have combat. This is an auto assault ship. It is a ship that has no crew, no oxygen, only five systems. Turns out to be a rebel automated scout, and it has one drone and one laser. Now I've paused with spacebar, you can pause at will. Their weapon is a single shot laser. When it shoots, it will hit our shields and break one bar of shields, but the shields will immediately recharge after about two seconds, three seconds or so. 
This beam is a fire beam. It doesn't deal damage, but it starts fires in my ship. But the beam cannot penetrate one bar of shield. So as long as my shields stay online, the beam drone can't actually start a fire in my ship. And the laser can only deal one point of damage, you know, one blast of its laser shot. So we have a very good chance of not taking any damage in this encounter. We might have to put out some fires though, but that shot actually missed. So now our weapons are charged. We have a missile launcher and a laser weapon. I don't think I need to use the missile launcher. Ideally, I'd like to keep my missiles. So why don't we try to shoot our weapon at their drone control system and take their drone offline? Because that one laser can't deal damage to us. They would have to have a two-shot laser to actually hurt us because we have one bar of shields. So if we can take down one of their weapons, we won't take damage in this fight. So why don't we try to take out their drone system first? Okay, both shots hit. The system is damaged. You can see because it is yellow or orange, I guess. And our weapons are recharging. Their weapons didn't do anything. Now I can fire on their shield system. Take their shields offline. There's no crew on the ship, but it can repair itself slowly. But our weapons will be able to deal more damage than they can repair. Or we will be able to deal damage faster than they can repair it. And without shields, without a piloting system, they have 0% dodge chance. Their shields are not going to stop any shots coming in. So this guy is dead. No problem. The ship explodes and we get one fuel, one missile, and 13 scraps. We actually have some money now. We could upgrade our ship. If I click on the ship button up here, we have all of our systems. We can upgrade it at will. We can upgrade our reactor so we can put the med bay online. We can upgrade the piloting system, the med bay, the shields, whatever we want. Right now, though, with only 15 scrap, we can't upgrade anything. So we're just going to, going to continue on instead. And we can see the rebel fleet now approaching us on the sector map. They are currently at the white line. They will move into the red line on the next turn. And we need to avoid this at all costs. Now you can, you can get caught by them and survive, but it's a very difficult fight and you get no reward out of it. So you just have to basically flee as quickly as possible. I will try to keep us ahead of it, but there are some strategies that, that involve you getting caught by the rebels and maybe we will deal with that in the future. Once you arrive, your screens light up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and they have tried to shut down your engines. Your crew manages to keep them barely operational and you move in to attack. So we have only one bar of engines. The uh, computer in the engine room is offline, so we only have a 10% dodge chance. So because Will can't actually man the computer right now because it's hacked, I'm going to send him, send him into the weapons room and inside the weapons room, we have a 10% faster charge of our weapons. Now this ship has a double shot laser so they can penetrate our shields and they also have a beam. Now this beam, if it hits the shields, will not do any damage. So, you know, this is an AI, so they are probably not going to shoot their lasers first and then the beam. But if they did, they would be able to hit us with the beam. So it's really just a matter of what's, what order do they fire their weapons in. Okay, they fire the beam at the same time they fired their laser and everything hit and our shield system is on fire. And not only that, we have no way of venting the oxygen to these rooms, allowing us to put out the fire. This is bad. So I'm going to send both of my crew members into the door control room. I want to repair the doors so I can open the ship and put out the fire. If I can remove the oxygen from the room by opening airlocks to the outside, then the fire will go out. We can get in there and repair it. In the meantime, I need their weapons to go offline. I'm going to fire at their weapon system with my burst laser and see if this takes down all of their weapons. It did not, so I'm going to fire a missile in. I need to take their weapons offline. I have no shields right now. Okay, their weapons are offline. Good. That gives us time to get the doors repaired. Okay, doors are repaired. Paused it. Now I can open the doors with the uh, this little helpful button here. I can open all the doors, even to the you know even the inside inside ones and outside ones, or I can just manually click on the doors to open them and get this fire put out ASAP. Q. 
keep their weapons offline. I'm going to keep shooting at them. We missed with that shot, so they are going to hit us with the beam. There's no way that I can get in there, so the fire's out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close all doors and then open all doors with this button here. It opens, the first time you click it, it opens only the interior doors. And with the interior doors open, oxygen will flow through the ship and evenly distribute faster. So I can get people in to repair the shield system right now. Their laser is going to hit us. Their beam, I mean. Just fire. Okay, good. We, we took a little bit of damage, not that much. We picked up two fuel and 12 scrap. Get the shield system repaired, guys. And that was a, you know, rough situation. There wasn't much we could have done about that, though. Our weapons charged at about the same time. Theirs were slightly faster, and so they managed to get the first shot in and took down our shields. Okay, everything's repaired. Oxygen is back, 100%. Let's jump to the next beacon. And I'm going to go into the nebula because when you're in a nebula, the Rebel fleet moves more slowly, so we have a chance of getting more beacons done. So there is a Rebel drone here, and it is going to attack us. It has one combat drone, which just flies around and shoots, and they have a ion weapon. Now the ion weapon, if it hits our shields, will take down our shields for like seven seconds. It has a like five second ion charge, and then the shields have to naturally recover, which takes another two seconds. So it's going to be about seven seconds while our shields are down if this thing hits. That's going to give the drone plenty of opportunity to really wreck us if we don't take that drone offline. So the drone has to be our first priority. It actually did manage to sneak in a shot because our weapon or our shields do not recharge all that quickly because we don't have anyone staffed in the shield room. Now, the Ion Blast, you can see it right here in the bottom left corner, is coming in. If it hits the shields, the shields will be down for seven seconds. So here's what I'm going to do. This is kind of a uh, mid-advanced level tip here. I'm going to depower my shields. I'm gonna let the Ion Blast hit wherever it hits because they didn't. They probably didn't aim at my shield system. They probably aimed at my oxygen system or something with this shot. I'm going to let it hit and then bring up my shields right after it hits so that um, so that the shields come up before this drone manage, manages to hit me again. So I'm just going to depause and pause really quickly. Our shields are offline. Now I'm going to start the shield recharge process by dumping the power back into the shield system. It missed, but it was aimed at the door system and the shields are back online before the their drone manages to fire. Their drone is now offline. Their beam itself cannot deal damage to us. It's only the drone, so that's why I wanted to take that offline. And you can see now our shields are offline. They're ionized. Now they're coming back. Ion again. Ions really, really do keep your weapons offline for a long, or your shields offline for a long time. So you really gotta mitigate your potential of taking damage. Now our weapons, I have to fire them every time. What a hassle. There is an auto fire button. If I click the auto fire button and then assign the weapons to shoot at something, they will continuously shoot at that location every time they are available. I don't need to constantly tell them where to shoot or when to shoot. So this guy is dead. He has no dodge potential at all. So I'm just going to shoot at his shield system and knock him out. Our FTL drive did recharge. It charges every combat round and if you want to escape you have to wait for the FTL drive to charge. That is why having the bonus recharge chance or rate I should say of your engine system is very good because it allows you to get out of combat more easily if you do not think you will survive it. We get three fuel, two missiles and 17 scrap. That's a pretty good payout. Do need to repair the med bay though. We did manage to get hit once and we have 42 scrap. I could upgrade something. I am going to upgrade the med bay. Now you might think that is a very weird thing to upgrade. Notice also that when I upgraded it, it's still destroyed. I have to I have to repair it. It's still in the red state. Um, you might think that that is a weird thing to have to uh, purchase early, the med bay. But guess what? That encounter we got on the first beacon of this game, a second level med bay would have countered it. It would have been, hey, this guy has been out on this planet for so long. Why don't we put him in the in the second level med bay and you know, give him the uh, the advanced 
you know, psychology protocols or whatever and, and cure his insanity. That is why I like getting the second level medbay because it protects us against those types of events that can cause you to lose crew members. If we had had a second level medbay, we, 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 we would have actually gained a crew member there. We would be at four instead of two. I'm still going to buy the second level medbay because it's a good purchase, but that is why I like buying it because it helps insulate you from those bad RNG rolls basically. Because we could have just gotten a crew member for free at that beacon, we would have guaranteed it if we had the second level medbay. So we have a Mantis ship. They just start shooting us. <laughs> it is a Mantis ship in a nebula and they start shooting us. They have one missile launcher and one single shot laser. The single shot laser cannot penetrate our shields. The missile launcher penetrates all shields though. So the only way that this missile is going to miss us is if our evade chance kicks in and we have a one in five chance of evading it. So we just have to wait. We have to see what happens. I'm going to fire immediately at their weapon system, though. Maybe we can get our lasers off before their missile... No. Okay. It hits our engine room. That's... I'm going to shoot one missile in just so that I can take their missile launcher offline. Good, and it did land. Uh, their missile did hit our engine room. Now we only have a 10% chance to dodge, but we have a chance to dodge. You know, it's not like... It's not like it has reduced our dodge chance to zero. The system system is still online. I'm going to shoot at their shield system. If this is, here, I'm actually going to move the pilot over to the, uh, the sensors room so we can see inside their ship. Oh, it's a, never mind, it's a nebula. We can't see inside their ship, but <coughs> we can see the doors opening and closing and that means movement. Uh, if there are ma mantises repairing the ship, mantises are very slow. This is a mantis ship, so their repairing is super slow. We get 13 scrap from this, basically. The missile and the drone part is meh. Go to one more uh, nebula beacon and then we can jump out of the nebula. We get a rebel scout. They begin to power up their FTL drive. If they, if they get away, it will no doubt warn the fleet of our position. So their FTL right now is charging. They also have a beam drone plus a ion weapon. So similarly to the last fight that we had, if we take down their beam drone, they can't damage us with just the ion weapon. But this ship, if it gets away, it's going to warn the rebel fleet of our presence. It's going to allow them to catch up faster. We need to take out either the piloting system or the engine system to prevent them from escaping. But we also have to deal with this damage that's coming in. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. Depower the shields, power them up right as the shot, the ion shot comes in. The ion shot did not hit our shields, meaning the shields will block the beam shot. This is exactly what I wanted. Now, we probably won't be able to do that too many times. It's kind of lucky that, you know, things worked out. The recharge rate of the shields came back. The beam drone had just fired. Kind of a golden opportunity there, but that's why sometimes you have to, if you can micromanage your shield power, you can get out of taking damage. I have a missile and a burst laser charged up. I want to stop them from escaping, so I'm going to shoot at their pilot system first. And if I hold control, I can anti-auto-fire. The missile hits, so now enemy FTL is delayed. This means that it is not, their FTL drive is not charging. Now with the burst laser, I need to take down their drone, so I'm gonna shoot at their drone system. And our shots hit. Their drones offline. I don't need to, to micromanage my shield power. I knew that those shots were going to hit too because their piloting system is completely destroyed. They have a zero percent dodge chance. These shots cannot miss. So, with their drone system completely destroyed, they cannot damage us. So we're just going to pick our targets across their ship, destroy them, pick up some extra loot, seven scrap, not very much, but we did get two fuel, so it's not too bad. Now we can visit a few more beacons before we have to go to the exit. Ideally, you want to visit as many beacons as possible before you hit the exit. So I am kind of planning out my path so that I have as many beacons as possible before I reach them. Okay, similarly, this ship is trying to get away. They have one drone plus one missile launcher. Now, we can't depower our shields to prevent the missile from hitting so at this point we just need to hit their weapons i think first 
The drone may get a, sh a couple of shots in, but taking out their weapons to take out their missile launcher is important. Our piloting system got hit, so now we have a 0% dodge chance because it's destroyed. Oxygen is hit, but the oxygen doesn't go out immediately. It's going to slowly decrease over time. We have time to repair it later. I need to focus on the combat first, so... Our Artemis missed, which means I'm going to send in the burst laser at their weapon system. I gotta take down this missile. Okay, missile's offline. They still have a drone. Get the, get the piloting back online. I'm going to send a missile... I'm gonna send a missile on their piloting system. If I can take down their dodge chance, then my burst laser shots can take out their drone system. It missed, so I'm going to shoot at their piloting system. I don't want them to get away. Even if the drone does damage to me, I'd rather get the rewards from killing the ship. Okay, their, their piloting system's offline. That means they have a 0% dodge chance and their FTL drive is delayed. It's not charging anymore. Oxygen is slowly decreasing, but we still have time. Take out their drone system. Every time the shot from the drone misses as well, we do get some additional skill training on our crew members. And when they reach a, uh, you know, 7 of 13, when they reach 13 out of 13, they get better at their job and the, the uh, bonus evasion increases. Dolan is our pilot, so he will have a plus 7, I think, evasion instead of plus 5. And Will, on the engines, will have a plus 7 evasion instead of plus 5. So now... Now that we've taken out their weapons, I don't need the dodge chance. Let's get this oxygen system repaired. We still have time. Let's move the burst laser to fire on something else. Weaken as many systems of the ship as possible. Their shields are now completely offline. Their weapons have come back online. But I think we... No. I think we're going to get hit by one missile, but I don't want to use a missile. I'd rather just get hit once for one point of damage rather than use a missile. Missiles usually cost about eight, eh, maybe like six scrap in the store. Healing only only costs about two at this point in the game, so it's more beneficial to take one point of damage than it is to use one missile. We get nine scrap, two fuel, and we are close to the rebel fleet. If I stayed here, we would meet them on the next turn, but I'm going to continue moving forward instead. So let us, if, if I go to this beacon right here and then go to the exit, we will be ahead of the rebel fleet. But what I could do is I could go to a beacon, a beacon, another beacon, another beacon, and then hit the exit, like one, two, three, four, and then hit the exit. And then we'll get more beacons on this sector. And I said it earlier, a big indicator of your, of your success in FTL is how many beacons did you explore? If I go straight to the exit, that's one, two beacons. If I go to the exit and then to these two beacons over here, that's an additional two beacons. That's four beacons. So what I might want to do is go to the exit beacon and then leave the exit beacon, go around, take another loop, come back, have to fight the rebels, but have gotten some more scrap, some more fuel, some more missiles out of it from the other beacons. So this is a slaver ship. They want one of our crew members. We can send a random crew member over, or we can say we will never surrender. We will never surrender. Now, this ship is a Zoltan ship. This means it has a green super shield. The super shield we have to destroy before we can actually deal damage to the ship itself. It's going to block missiles. It's going to block lasers. So I need to shoot at it with everything I have. They do have an ion weapon. That really sucks. But I can do the same thing I've been doing, which is stagger my I can stagger my shields on and off to make sure that the uh, our shields stay online for when the laser hits. I don't care if the beam or if the ion blast hits a med bay or a weapon system as long as the laser doesn't hit and I can kind of control that by powering the shields on and off a little bit. Now I could I am going to use one more missile to try to punch through the shield. That one hit finally. Their laser missed. Ion's coming in. There's a lot of micromanaging in this game, but if you can micromanage it well, you have a good chance of coming out with a victory. Laser hit. Ion's going to come out in a second. I'm going to shoot on their weapon system. I need to take their weapons offline. 
Okay, good. Now that their weapons are offline, we don't need to use any more missiles to kill them. Our, our laser can finish the job. And if I move a uh, pilot into the sensors room, we can see what they have. They have two mantises. They're trying to escape. They have a fire on their ship too. Mantises are terrible at repairing. So they are, it's gonna take them forever to repair their ship. They took one damage because the shield system was destroyed by fire. Uh, they surrender. They are offering us a slave that we can uh, free and have them join our crew. We are going to accept a crew member, Liam. So now we have Liam. Liam's not gonna be the pilot. Uh, we need to heal people as well. Uh, but yeah, we have another crew member now. So, you know, we, we lost June earlier. We have a replacement for June now. This replacement is going to go onto the weapon system and get trained up there. And even just being on the weapon system improves our cooldowns of weapons. We can see the burst laser, for instance, it's at the, at the peak of this bar. And now it's slightly, slightly lower. 10% lower, I do believe. So now we have an, another crew member. That was a good fight. Getting a crew member, that's like a 40 scrap value. So that is a perfectly, perfectly good thing to pick up on that fight. I'm happy with that. Okay, this is the next sector beacon and there's nothing here. Now I could leave right now. I could go to the next sector. I could go to an NG sector or a pirate sector and then continue on or I could jump to a couple more beacons and explore a little bit more of this sector before I leave. It will mean I have to fight a rebel ship. But, pro tip here, if the exit beacon is inside of a nebula, then it's almost always worthwhile to visit more beacons because you don't have to deal with the ABS. We don't know what the ABS is at this point, but we will come to it later, almost guaranteed. So. Because this is in because this is in a nebula, we have an, a certain advantage to explore more. So I'm going to explore more, and we will have to fight a rebel ship, but we don't have to deal with an ABS as well that's going to shoot at us and damage us. So this is a rebel ship that is attacking a small refueling outpost. We are going to defend the outpost because screw rebels. They have one fire drone, I believe. They have one regular beam, and they have one laser. So it's kind of a nasty setup here. If I can take out their weapons though, their beam drone won't be able to shoot me. So I'm gonna focus all of my attention on their weapons. Hopefully the uh, burst lasers can get in there. Excuse me. So that sucks. Our shields are not now offline. The beam drone is going to eat us up. Hopefully their weapons will get offline here in a second. Good, their weapons are now completely offline. I need to send literally everybody in to repair the shields because we are going to have fires start up very quickly. I'm also going to depower the oxygen. Pro tip, if you're being attacked by fire, turn off your oxygen. Okay, turn off the oxygen, open the doors wherever the fires are spawning. I need to get the shields repaired ASAP. I could also fire in an Artemis to take down their drones, but I think we're fine. We should be able to uh, stop the fires, no problem. Med Bay might get hurt, but whatever. Okay, now the shields are repaired. They're going to come online in a second. I'm going to send everyone back to their rooms, except for Liam, because the uh, engine room is getting deoxygenated. I'm going to have him stay in the shield room to get us a uh, slightly faster recharge rate on the shields. Everyone else is going to go to their rooms, though. Our weapons are online. I'm going to put him in the sensor room really quickly. So they do have someone re repairing the weapons. I want to wait just a second for the first weapon to come back online and then I'm going to shoot it again. Keep it offline. Good. Okay, our fires are gone. So close doors, open doors, turn on the oxygen system and the oxygen will replenish faster. I'm going to send Will to repair the medbay. We have, a, we have some time. Their weapons are still completely offline. And as long as I keep their weapons offline by shooting when they repair them by one bar, they can't damage us anymore. We did take a little bit of damage. Beam drones can be kind of tricky to deal with, especially when your shields are offline. Okay, keep shooting at their weapons when they get them online. The beam can't technically do any damage without the laser, so I'm gonna wait. I'm not going to use a missile. If I can do this without using a missile, I would prefer. Good, their weapons are completely offline again. 
close the doors, the oxygen in, oxygen is more or less uh, recovered on the ship, 99% now. And if I hit them, they die. Good. We get 19 scrap. That's worth more than the damage we took, so I'm okay with that. And we also got four fuel and 16 scrap from the outpost. So now we're up to 71 scrap. Pretty good. Pretty good, in fact, I'm going to buy another bar of shields. Now, I have to buy two power in shields in order to get one bar of shields. If you look on the right, it says one, two, three, four shield barriers in increments of two. So I have to buy 50 worth of shields to get one bar of shields. It's worth it though. So if I buy the shields, I have two bars of shields, but I, have, I don't have the power in my reactor to actually keep the shields online. So what I need to do is buy more power from my reactor. I can buy one more power that can at least let me put my engines online. Now, having two bars of shields is very important. We would not have taken damage on this last encounter had I had two bars of shields because they only had one laser and a laser can only pierce through or punk, punch through one bar of shields. Even if I have to have a slightly lower dodge chance, having the bonus shields is probably worthwhile. So let's continue to jump around. I can actually go to this beacon and then this beacon. The rebels will not reach this beacon in one turn. The, uh, the, the distance between these lines is constant every single jump, and I played this game long enough that I know that this beacon will be safe next turn. It's gonna be close, it's gonna be tight, but we'll be able to do it. Now this is a pirate that's basically blockaded the beacon. For a small fee, we will let you continue on your way. We don't have 23 scrap, and I would not give them 23 scrap either. Reject their offer. This ship has an ion weapon and a beam. Even if their iron weapon hits, we still have one bar of shields. The iron weapon, how iron weapons work is that they deal damage based off of the bars in our shield system. So one hit would reduce the shield power by one, two hits would reduce the shield power by two, but even if we got hit twice, we would still have a bar of shields online, so we would be fine. Their shot missed, so it doesn't matter at this point. I'm gonna shoot at their weapons, take the iron weapon and the, uh, the laser offline. Let's see what they're doing. They've got some people repairing a Zoltan and an NG. Zoltans give you free power. NGs are really, really, really good at repairing. So even if I had hit with those shots, he would be able to repair this pilot system before I could shoot again. I think they have a doubled repair rate. Zoltans give you power for, for free, but they have reduced health. They want to surrender four missiles, eight scrap. Four missiles is actually not half bad. We only have four missiles, so this would double our missile supply, but I think I would rather not accept surrender. I think we can get more, more better rewards by waiting and trying to kill them and looting their ship. Hmm. Weapons still online, but they don't have enough weapon power to actually do anything. I'm gonna shoot at their engines now just to kind of spread out the damage make their pilot have to leave so that they have a zero percent dodge chance because they have no pilot now and maybe if i get lucky i can land two of these three shots and kill them i mean i guess technically it was a 100 percent chance to hit wasn't it there we go we still got two missiles but we got a lot more scrap that's pretty good and we get one more beacon before we have to fight the rebels and escape from this sector the rebel progress doesn't carry over between sectors, so if we can spend as much time here as possible, that's good. Now this is an asteroid field, and this is a rock ship. It is a pirate ship, and they are moving into attack. The asteroids will hit, and they will take down shields of both ships. They have a single shot laser plus a three shot flak cannon. A dangerous weapon, it's very quick to fire. But if we can, oh, that asteroid actually took down their shields. So now they have no protection against future asteroids. We could take some damage here, but I think we'll be fine. We have two bars of shields. I'm actually gonna depower the oxygen really quickly to power up the engines so that we have an additional 5% dodge chance. Maybe we will uh, get some missiles, mi some misses. We got one, not enough, but uh, we're fine. We, their weapons are now offline. The asteroids are really doing a number on their shield system. Let's get people in here to repair our door system 
and then we can leave. And I don't even have to fire at them, but I'm still going to fire at them anyways. The asteroids would eat them up. And, oh, we got some level ups now. Three fuel, 18 scrap. Will now has a plus seven bonus to his dodge chance, and Dolan now has a plus seven bonus to his dodge chance when they're in their respective rooms. So that's pretty good. And you may have noticed that the rock ship resisted some of the hull damage from our laser. That's the uh, benefit of having a rock ship compared to anything else. You get a chance of negating incoming damage, basically. So the ship is in danger. We cannot upgrade. We have to jump straight to the exit. We could go to the distress beacon, but then we'd have to go through two rebel sectors to get to the exit, and I'm, I'm not comfortable doing that right now. So let's just jump straight to the exit. Now, I mentioned earlier, we do not have to deal with an ASB. ASBs are basically uh, cruisers in the distance that are shooting at us with giant anti-ship batteries. This is a nebula. We can't see any other cruiser. We're in one-on-one -on -one combat with this fighter. That gives us a slight advantage. However, they have a freaking flak gun Mark II. Okay, get the get the engines powered. This thing is a seven shot weapon. It's a beast. I need to take down their weapon system ASAP. Okay, their weapons are now offline. We should be able to get out of here before they can charge this thing up again. It's pretty quick to charge too. We're lucky that our uh, missile actually got in there and hit and their weapon system is now offline because we started a fire in there. We can't see, right, because we are in a nebula. And I forgot to put Liam back on the weapon system. My bad, but it didn't matter in the long run. Yeah, we started a fire because that's what uh, destroyed their weapon system. We should have no problem at all getting out of here, at least. FTL drive is almost charged. We may be able to kill their ship, but probably not. I mean, I'm going to try because we do get fuel and only fuel. We don't get scrap, we don't get anything else. We do get fuel for killing the ship, so if I can kill them, I'll try. If I can't, though, I'm just gonna leave. It's gonna take a while. They have a lot of shields. We have to punch through the shields before we can damage them, so let's, let's shoot at the shields. Spread out the damage, make them have to repair stuff. They have their flat gun back online, but maybe I can take it out before it has a chance to fire. Good, we did. I'm gonna alternate on the shields, weapons, see if I can't reduce their shields and then shoot at the weapons to kind of make our punch a little bit stronger. Oh, we started another fire in their weapon systems. Now I can ignore that for the time being, shoot on, shoot on their shields, and if all three shots land, they are dead. Good. And we get one fuel. You only get, you only get one fuel by killing a rebel fleet behind enemy lines. And that's really just a balance thing. It's to prevent you, if you have a strong run, from just bouncing around these beacons getting infinite scrap. So we could go to an NG controlled sector or a pirate controlled sector. I'm going, going to go to a pirate controlled sector because I like red beacons or red sectors. Hostile sectors give you in general, more combat, and combat is a very good source of scrap. And scrap is money, and money is life in FTL. A few years ago, this region was bustling with trade, and now it is overrun with bandits and marauders. You should tread lightly here. We should, but we also have a pretty decently laid out ship. We have a good missile launcher. Artemis is one of the best missile launchers. Burst Laser Mark II might actually be the best weapon in the game. It's the best balanced, possibly. So we're quite strong from an offensive standpoint. The only question is, you know, I mean, we're strong defensively too. We have two bars of shields, which, which is nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so this is a rebel scout again. They are not trying to escape. They have one laser plus one beam weapon. Now, normally, we would not be able to take damage here because the one laser couldn't penetrate our shields, but because of the asteroids, we might get hit by the beam drone. So I want to take, ooh, an asteroid just completely wrecked their piloting system. So my three shots coming in for my beam laser are guaranteed to hit. Ooh, we almost took damage there. That was very close. But now that their beam is offline, we are fine. 
even if an asteroid and a laser take down our shields, we should be able to recharge our shields fast enough. Oh, and an asteroid actually came in and destroyed the drone, funnily enough. It didn't need to because the drone was already offline. I'm going to shoot at their shield system. Because if I can take their shields offline, they cannot actually... Or they can't block the asteroids that are coming in. The asteroids are going to hit them and deal a lot of damage over time. They only have, or they have 0% dodge chance because their piloting system is destroyed. So there we go. We got 17 scrap. And because this is a dangerous beacon, we have to wait for the FTL to recharge, but it recharges relatively quickly when you are out of combat. Okay, there's a few beacons here I can go to and then I can make my way towards the exit. There is a store, but we need a lot more scrap before we go to the store. Usually I like to have about a hundred scrap or more before I hit the store. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait for the FTL to recharge. We can explore or we can wait. I'm going to explore. We get hit, take five damage, and we have a fire on board. So we got to deal with the fire. You know, that was an event where if I had better sensors, maybe I could have actually had a, uh, a unique option that would let us scan the field looking for asteroids. That would be beneficial, like it, um, rich in minerals or something like that. We don't have a very good sensor system. It's only at level one, so we didn't get any special options there. We don't have any, any special scanning equipment on board our ship, so we just took some damage. Unnecessary, but it was a risk, and it was a risk I took. Sorry, just taking a drink of water. So this is another told beacon, 25 scrap, or reject their offer. I will absolutely reject their offer. They have a pike beam, which is a normal beam like we've been seeing, but it's very long, and a laser. Now the pike beam cannot penetrate one bar of shields and the laser can't penetrate one bar of shield. So they can't do any damage to us at all. So I can, I can shoot at them with impunity, basically. This is a situation also where if I was playing this solo or if you're playing at home, you could actually just depower your weapons and not shoot them and let them shoot at you for eternity and slowly, slowly build up skill on your crew members. I could put Liam in the shield room and whenever a laser hit the shield he would get a point in his shield uh, skill and eventually I would be able to get all of my crew members leveled up on engines, shields, and piloting. And if you are trying to give yourself the best possible chance of succeeding, of succeeding in FTL I would recommend doing that. It's a little bit cheesy but if you're having a hard time that is a very decent if not time-consuming strategy to give yourself just a little bit of an advantage going forward. They are going to try to escape. They're dead. They're not going, going to escape. They have no shields, their engines are damaged, and I don't even think they have a pilot because FTL is delayed right now. Two fuel, 13 scraps. So we have 18, 18 fuel, that's pretty good. I'm going to jump to another beacon. 66 scrap. We did not pick up much scrap yet on this sector, and we took five points of hull damage. That's not very good. Okay, so it's good that we have the asteroid field here because I'm, I'm, I depowered my uh, oxygen to power up my engines just to give us a little bit of extra dodge chance. The asteroids are going to really take down their super shield very quickly, which is nice for me. And now that, now that their shields are offline, I can try to hit their weapon system. I missed, though. And their Ion Blaster will not be able to take down our weapons completely, but with the Asteroids, they can. So we did take one hit, but we managed to take their weapons completely offline, so I can get my engines repaired, and we can kill them because their weapons are offline. As long as I don't get a ton of misses, we should be good. I want to keep Liam on the uh, weapon system. I don't want him to help with the repairs because I want him to get trained up. And the only way he gets trained up is if he is in the weapon system as I shoot it. 18 scrap. Get my crew members healed up a little bit. 
There you go. Get the shields powered up again. Wait for my shields to come back online. There we go. And we will jump. I, I could jump to the store. I could heal myself. I, I'm pretty low on hull integrity, but I'm going to skip the store. I'm going to skip the, score, the store because I only have 84 scrap. It's not a whole bunch. We find a research station sending out a distress signal. I'm going to investigate. There are dead scientists and there is nothing else happening. We just find a abandoned station. Everyone's dead, but we get 18 scrap and one drone part. Not bad. Uh, do I want to upgrade anything? Yes, let's buy... Well, let, let's see if there's anything we can jump to. Not really. Let's get one more bar of reactor power so I can keep the engines powered up permanently. Give myself just that little bit of extra dodge chance. Might help us to stay alive, honestly. Another uh, pirate that we can bribe. We are not going to bribe him. We're just going to attack him. They do have a missile launcher, though. I like to get that missile launcher taken offline as soon as possible. And they do have a teleporter. This blinking blue icon on their ship is the teleporter room. And they sent someone over. Kapalka. Kapalka is going to try to destroy our shield system. I do not think so. Will and Liam are going to go fight him. Oh, no, he's going into the uh, weapons room. One on two, we are going to be able to kill this man, no problem. I did shoot a missile because I wanted to make sure I took their weapons offline. There's a fire in our engine room. Got to get that fire put off, put, uh, put out as soon as possible. It is going to destroy the engine, so we did take one point of damage. Unfortunate, but it happens. Okay. Get the doors opened, get the med bay powered, get the engines repaired. And they only have one laser online now, but they do have a missile launcher. I want to keep that missile offline. So I'm just going to keep firing on their weapon system, basically. Liam, I want him to help repair the engines, probably. Their missile's back online. We didn't take it offline, so I'm going to use one of our missiles to take their missiles offline. If it hits, it did hit. They want to surrender, and six fuel is actually pretty good. Six fuel is like 12 scrap, four missiles is like 24 scrap. I think I'm going to accept this offer. Primarily for the fuel and the missiles, that's that's pretty good. So I'm going, I'm going to accept. They get to live another day. And I picked up a lot of fuel. Don't need to buy fuel for quite some time. I am going to buy also one bar of sensors. Sensors are pretty useful. Allows us to, us to see inside the enemy ship. We know if there's a fire started or something. And also it's just going to be better for you so that you can see what's going on. So pirate ship, there's an NG in the engines room and a human pilot, one ion blaster, one laser. We could take damage from these weapons with the asteroids. So I'm, I do want to take their weapons offline ASAP. But if I get lucky and get one dodge from either of their two weapons, we, we are perfectly fine. We won't take damage. Okay, good. Their laser hit first, which was uh, bad for them. And our weapons hit, their weapons are offline. But the NG is going to repair them very quickly. So I'm actually just going to focus on their weapon system. They want to surrender with five missiles, which is a lot of missiles, but only one drone, drone part and only nine scrap. We'll get more scrap by killing them, and I want scrap. Scrap is money, scrap is life. Going to shoot on the weapons again. Ooh, two misses enough that they didn't take any damage. That means the Ion Blaster is going to shoot at us, and I'm, I'm going to let it hit. Their laser is now offline. Don't let an asteroid come in and hit me. Okay, good. We got a little bit lucky there, but I it was a calculated risk. I took it. Oh, the human going in to repair the, uh, the weapons was a bad call because he repairs not as quickly as the NG. And we picked up 18 scrap. More than eight. So I am glad about killing them. Now, I think I'm going to go into the nebula because... Well, we, we have to at this point. We can't go back. And all we get is invaded. So we have invaders on our ship. We don't know where they are. Actually, we do. They're in the oxygen room. There's a little fist symbol. 
and there's now one in the engine room. I don't want them to take down my weapons or my, my oxygen, excuse me. Ideally, I would like to fight them in the med bay because we will get healed, they will not. So what I'm going to do is literally open every single door on my ship except for the med bay and let's say the shield room. I want to, well, I mean, these three doors, it doesn't really matter because there's no path to, to the outside, but I want to force them into the med bay so I can kill them while being healed by the med bay. So depower the oxygen system, get the uh, oxygen flushed as soon as possible. There they go. Now that they are fighting me in the med bay plus one guy in the shield room, I can open the doors, let the oxygen flow through the ship again. Turn on the oxygen system, of course. Now they did break one bar of shields, but that's fine because we can repair it. You only take hull damage if your shield if your system is completely destroyed. So they are dead. Repair the shields. We get um, you know one extra repair level on somebody on Dolan. He got one extra repair level, so he's now five of sixteen, and we killed their crew. Easy encounter, but we didn't get anything from it, except for, I guess, combat training on our crew. I'm gonna visit the Nebula Beacon first, and then I can jump up and around and get to the exit. Ooh, this is a Plasma Storm. Plasma Storms are dangerous because your power gets cut in half. We only have enough power for one bar of shields and one weapon. They also have one beam and one combat drone. So here's what I'm thinking. Put all the power in the shields. Literally all of our power but one. Get the shields powered to level two. That way their beam plus drone shouldn't be able to do damage to us. And all we have to do is hit their drone system once. Because if I get this combat drone offline, I don't have to worry about it shooting me. Good their drone system is destroyed, now they only have a beam, and the beam will get stopped by one bar of shield. So I'm going to power up the oxygen system, and power up the burst laser, and then use the burst laser because it doesn't take any ammunition. So we're going to be fine on this combat. Plasma storms suck, but as long as you just micromanage your power a little bit, you'll be fine. This beam can't damage us at all, I can attack this drone with impunity basically. And, uh, you know, I took their drone offline. They, they rerouted their power into the shield system, but they still have a reduced power supply. They only have the one weapon, though, so they can't damage us at all. Their shields are offline. Now they have zero dodge chance, and they can't escape, even if they were trying. The drone is not online, even though they repaired the drone system, because the drone takes more than just the one power in the drone system. And we get three fuel and 17 scrap. And I have to depower my weapons to power up my engine system, but that's fine. We can go into the nebula and then go around to the exit. I think that's fine. I could also try to visit this beacon and then go up to the nebula and then go around. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, I'm going to go to the to this beacon outside of the nebula, then into the nebula, then out of the nebula, and then around to the exit. I think I can get one more beacon in by doing this. If I have to fight the rebels, I have to fight the rebels. We're very low on HP, but could be worth it. And I'm definitely going to attack these slavers. I could buy a crew member, but I don't want to spend the scrap, and I can easily kill these guys. They only have enough weapons to take down my shields, they can't actually do damage to me. So I don't even need to shoot on their weapon system, I can shoot on their shield system, for instance. And again, this is one of those combats where if I was really, really microing my play, what I would do is I would not even shoot them. I would just let my crew members train up on them shooting me and eventually get my crew members maximum level in piloting, engines and shields. We started a fire in their engine room, Engie's going in to put it out, he will put it out very quickly. But now they have a 0% dodge chance, so we managed to land all the shots, 
take out their shield system once again. Going to alternate again, fire on their engines. And they want to surrender by giving us a crew member. I am going to accept that offer. Now we have Nazia, who is our new shield person. Welcome aboard, Nazia. Okay, pretty good. We, we got a very good benefit from getting in that combat. Now we can go up to the nebula again. Trade three missiles for 10 fuel. I'm going to ignore because we have plenty of fuel. And I'm going to one, two, three, one, two. I might have to fight the rebels if I go up and around, but I don't want to go straight to the exit. So one, it's like to there. And then to like, I will have to fight the rebels if I go around. But you know what? Let's do it anyway. Let's be risky. Sell missiles for scrap. I will sell five for 15 scrap. I do need missiles to actually deal damage to enemies sometimes, but scrap is life. So that is a empty beacon. There was nothing there and we will definitely be getting in combat with these rebels. Uh, we are not going to surrender to slavers. Again, they cannot damage us. This would be a good opportunity to get trained up, but they have a lot of drones, but they're internal drones. Anti-personnel drone, basically a defensive drone. Repair drone that they can use to repair their systems. So, you know, any damage I do is going to get repaired super quickly. But uh, they can't damage us at all, so this is going to be very easy combat. This isn't rebels, this is pirates. Of course, because there's aliens aboard, there's NG aboard. Rebels really don't like the alien races at, at all. Still just getting in the occasional shot, but that's fine. And they're going to try to offer us another crew member. I'm going to accept. That means we don't get any scrap, but having crew members is very important. I can put them on the door system, for instance, and now any boarders will have to break through doors so I can deoxygenate rooms behind them and make their life miserable. Okay, so we have to fight rebels now. Before we do that, I'm going to purchase engine power. And the reason for this is twofold. First of all, the dodge chance, but second of all, the FTL recharge boost means that we might be able to escape with our lives. Otherwise, we might actually die here. They have a two-shot laser, two beams, and a missile launcher. This is actually horrendous. If both of those laser shots hit, I think we're just dead because the beams are just going to eat us up. I need to take down their weapons ASAP. Okay, we barely managed to make it out of those beam shots, and I need to repair our, our engines ASAP. Here comes the ASB in a second. It's this uh, big white blob that's going to come out from us. Oh, but it missed. You can see it right here. It did miss. So I think we'll be able to get out of this combat with our lives. The missiles keep missing too. Oh, this 40% dodge chance is amazing. Don't even need to fi fire once more. Get out of here. Next sector. Uh, we can go to a nebula or we can go to a Zoltan sector. I'm going to go to a Zoltan sector and I might regret it. Zoltan ships have that super shield, which means that our first couple of volleys at them is not going to deal damage to, the, to their ship, meaning I can't take their weapons offline. But I don't want to go to a nebula. Nebulas are annoying. So let's go to the Zoltan sector. This might be the end of us, but maybe I can find a shop and repair a little bit at least. Green sectors are usually slightly easier, so maybe we can survive this. Okay. First jump, hopefully we don't come across a Zoltan pirate ship. No, it's just some uh, Zoltan research facility. They are researching genetic distortion due to stasis sleep and prolonged FTL travel. They ask if our crew has the time to undergo a few scans. Sure, we get 13 scrap and some stiff dough. Okay, pretty good beacon. 
a net positive and we didn't have to do anything. That is what I like to see right now. Holy crap. Okay, this is... Isoltan Academy sits docked just outside the beacon perimeter. They're happy to show you the fruits of their labor and offer something to take home with you. 11 scrap plus an augment defense scrambler. This is actually big. This is really big. If I go to my ship in equipment, I see a defense scrambler. Defense Scrambler prevents enemy defense drones from targeting anything. We haven't seen defense drones yet, but they ha um, enemies can have, or even me, uh, can have a drone control system that has defense drones, and defense drones shoot down incoming missiles, and sometimes even your laser shots. So having this ability is big, because it means that enemy defense drones don't do anything. This means I can... Free, freely use missiles. If I get a drone system, I can use drones and they won't get shot out of the sky. It's a very, very, very good upgrade to get. I can also sell it for a lot of money. We find a Zoltan freighter and it is being attacked by a Mantis ship. We fight the Mantis, apparently. They're going to board us and they are boarding us in the door room, but two on one, two humans fighting one Mantis. We can survive this combat. Hopefully I can get one shot off before their missile charges. It's a, oh no, there it goes. Their missile missed again though, holy crap. I am loving this dodge chance that I have. Okay, get my crew member healed in the med bay. They only have one Mantis and one NG now because we killed their other Mantis, of course. The, the NG's, NG's gonna get their weapons powered up, but I think that if I damage their ship, the NG might have to go repair some other stuff. No, the Mantis is, is repairing right now. So I am going to shoot on their uh, weapon system now. Take their missiles offline once they get repaired. Or just kill them. Okay, good. We get 20 scrap. Not bad. And there is a store. I could go to one more beacon and then go to the store. So I'm going to go to one more beacon as stupid as this sounds, and then I'm going to go to the store. Please don't make me regret this by killing me. We have a Federation signal on a nearby planet. I will investigate it. We get a quest marker. You find a secret Federation outpost. They are regrettably out of supplies, but are eager to tell you of another base nearby. They give you the coordinates. Good, so we didn't die, but we also get, if I go to jump, a quest beacon over here behind the exit. So if I go there, I might be able to pick up some bonuses, basically. Some free stuff, free supplies, or maybe it's a trap, I don't know. Everything in this game is a risk, except for when you know it's not. We have a shop, meaning we can heal. They have some guns, reconstructive teleport, crew gets fully healed while teleporting. Drone recovery arm, non-destroyed drones will be reusable. FTL Recharge Booster, FTL Drive Powers Up Quicker. We also have crew members, a Rockman and a Slug. Rockman are healthy, slow, and immune to fire. Slugs are telepathic. We don't need to have sensors to see any enemies. Uh... Well, I, I think I need another gun. We, we're pretty light on weaponry at this point. I think I want to buy the flak cannon. We don't have enough money for it, but I do have the defense scrambler. And I was talking it up, saying that this was a very good piece of equipment, but I need the scrap to buy a gun and heal myself. So I think I am going to sell it. It's good, don't get me wrong, but right now I'd rather have a gun plus some health. I'm gonna heal up to about there and maybe buy a little bit of fuel as well, just to keep ourself, ourselves from running out. And now I have a burst laser, a flat gun, and an Artemis launcher. Now, if I wanted to put the uh, burst laser and the flat gun online at the same time, I would need one more capacity in my weapon system. That means I need 35 scrap. So we can't put the weapon online until we get 35 more scrap, but that's relatively easily doable. Just a couple of rounds of combat, we should be fine. So this is a Rebel Fleet 
in advance of, or a rebel scout in advance of the rebel fleet. They are going to, no, they're not going to try to flee. I was thinking they would try to flee, but they are not. They do have a mind control system, which means that our crew member is now trying to destroy our weapons. I do not want that to happen. So I'm going to send Nellis into the weapon system to distract him. They ha also have a two shot laser plus a halberd beam. Now I've mentioned earlier that beams can't penetrate one bar of shields. The halberd beam is a beam that does two damage. And as a result, it can penetrate one bar of shields. So if the beam fires and our shields are partially offline, it will be able to penetrate and do damage. It won't do as much damage as, as if our shields were completely disabled, but it will still, still do a little bit of damage. Now I need to take down their weapons probably first. So I will use one, I'm not gonna use a missile. I'm just gonna shoot the lasers at, our, at their weapons. They all missed. So I'm gonna shoot an Artemis missile. Good. Our crew member is dying, so I'm going to swap out Nellis for Nausea and just distract this guy so he can't destroy our weapons. And now he's back under our control because of mind control is only temporary. And their double shot laser can't deal damage to us, so I will disable their mind control system if the shot lands. Didn't quite land fully, but that's okay. Get Willis trained up. He's actually max level engines now, so we get a plus 10 bonus from him. And Dolan is max level pilot, so we get a 10 bonus from him as well, which is very nice. Their mind control system is not completely offline. Now it is, though. Good. So now I don't think they will be able to damage us at all. I can shoot on anything I want. Their weapons don't really bother me with the single shot or double shot laser. But if I can take their shields offline, I can hopefully kill them a little bit more quickly. Good, they are dead. And we get 21 scrap and a little bit of fuel. And I am going to jump around the nebula a little bit before I hit this quest beacon, because I do want to get more scrap so that I can uh, get this flak cannon online. And nebulas are very nice because the uh, rebel ship progresses more slowly while you are in a nebula. They can't track you quite as easily. Now nebulas have a very good chance of being empty. These ones, however, were only partially empty. And this is a good trade. Two drone parts for 10 fuel. I'm not using drone parts for anything. I am going to accept that in a heartbeat. Excellent, excellent trade. One, two, and then go here. Let's go down to this, uh, not to the store, but in the uh, vicinity of the store and visit this beacon first. You jump into a debris field that used to be a Zoltan cruiser. Unfortunately, its NG escort takes you for the attacker and retaliates. They refuse all hails. So this ship is going to fight us. Hmm. Uh... I, I'm okay they have one laser plus an ion they have a anti-drone drone and they also have a defense drone mark two that's bad that's bad because it shoots down lasers which means I can't actually penetrate their shields I'd have to use missiles in order to make this work so I might actually just just flee from this combat not not necessarily because the ship is difficult, but because this drone makes it impossible for me to actually damage them. This is why I need a better weapon, because I need to be able to pierce their shields, but if one shot of three is getting shot down, I can't, because I'll, I'll only take down their shields. I won't actually do damage to them. If I shot in a missile, they'll, they'll just shoot down the missile, and I don't really have all that many missiles. So we're just going to leave this combat. We can't kill them, I don't think. They can kill us over time. They do have a pike beam, Ion Blasts. So that was a bad jump, but honestly, how could I have known that we would not be able to actually defeat that ship? At this point also, I can't really reach the exit beacon and the quest, but I want to go to the quest beacon I'll, real bad. So I will go to the quest beacon. If I have to fight rebels, I have to fight rebels. Well, this ship also sucks because they have a a missile launcher and a Zoltan shield. So I can't actually take 
their missile launcher offline without maybe using one missile. Our shields are wounded, the piloting system's wounded, piloting system's gotta get repaired ASAP. Hopefully we can take the missile offline pretty soon. Nope. And we're actually now on fire. Get everyone in there to take out this fire because our weapons are offline and their weapons are not offline. We might just die here. That would be very, very bad. Get those weapons repaired. They're just launch- we just lost a crew member. Fuck. Get the weapons repaired! I don't care that you're dying! Take out their weapon system. Holy crap. I need to get everybody healed up too. This is- this is real bad! Our shields are now completely offline as well. I mean, they don't have lasers or beams or anything, but holy cow, this is a tough combat. Okay. Their missiles are now offline. Get the weapons charged. Why didn't I charge up the weapons? Their missiles are offline. The bomb weapon that they have sucks, but it also can't deal hull damage. So I don't really mind that we are kind of getting hit. Okay, Nellis, we lost the guy who was in the uh, the weapons room, so we, you're going to be the new weapons man. Their weapons are now... I think they're out of missiles, which is good. <laughs> That's my saving grace right now, is that they actually have no missiles left. They almost... I mean, they did a really good job of just completely destroying my ship. I have no shields. If they had any lasers, I would probably be dead right now. Why am I not firing? Fire! Weapons. Take their shields offline. Kill them! Okay, get everything repaired, you idiots. Who's, who's on who's on weapons? Get on weapons. Get on weapons. Get those charged up. Wow, yeah, this was a nasty, nasty bit of combat. And... <laughs> and, you know, we took nine hull points. Or nine, nine points of damage to our hull. That's pretty bad. That's like half... That was half of our remaining health. And our shots keep missing, so we can't actually kill them. Man, this would be so much easier if I had the flak gun online, but I can't get that online without a little bit more power. And I need 12 more scrap to get the weapons online. Okay, everyone's healed. Get the power restored to everything. How, how is their dodge chance so damn good? Okay, stop firing on the shields. Fire on the pilot. Get him... I don't know. Destroy the piloting system. Maybe we, we can sneak in a shot at their shields, but with two people repairing, they should be able to repair it pretty quickly. Yeah. I don't know. Attack the engines, maybe? No, we still got enough misses that uh, we didn't actually do any damage there. So this is a long, tough combat. Considering their dodge chance right now, I think I'm lucky that I managed to hit so many shots earlier, because damn, that was close. Come on. Good. Shields wounded. If I can sneak in a couple of shots, maybe I can take their shields partially offline. At the very least, they now no longer have the bonus dodge from having someone in the engine room, but apparently it doesn't matter because we just keep missing. This is a long sprint of combat, but I don't want to use a missile because, you know, they can't damage us with only the ion blaster and I'd rather save missiles for when I really, really, really need them later. Oh, God. okay, you know what? Take the flak gun, have it shoot at their door system. It's not a very productive system to be shooting at, but the flak gun charges faster than the burst lasers. laser, so maybe we can just get this done faster. Okay. Two more damage. One more damage, and then they are dead. They're going to repair the door system in just a second, though. But he is going into the med bay, and there we go. They are now dead. Holy cow! Upgrade the weapon system, please. Get the flak gun and burst laser online at the same time. Okay. Now maybe we can actually punch through these uh, 
these ship shields that we've been dealing with. And at this point, I just want to get to the quest, distress, exit, and get out, because um, we do not have quite so much HP as I thought that we would at this point. At the Federation base, we get 27 scrap plus an ion intruder drone. We can't use it, but we can sell it for a bunch of scrap later, so it's okay. Might as well go to one nebula jump, because then we can go to the, the uh, distress beacon, then exit. And we will not have to fight the rebel fleet at the distress beacon, but we will have to fight them at the exit. So another freaking missile launcher. They're fighting us in the med bay. That is fine. I will send one person in there to fight, and I will wreck you because I'm in a med bay. Get the dodge chance up. Fire the flak gun. Fire the burst laser. Take out their missiles. Good. Their weapons are now offline. So I can actually just send the power out of the engines and to other places on my ship. Okay, shoot at their teleporter. Oh, it was already destroyed. If they can't bring this guy back, then I can kill him. Their, uh... Their uh, missile launcher is online. I didn't realize that. They want to surrender. No, thank you. I want to kill you because you dealt, dealt damage to me. Does that make me petty? Maybe, but also screw you. 24 scrap, 2 fuel, go to the distress beacon, see what we get. Combat maybe? It's combat. It is a trap, but they only have one stunner and one beam, so they can't damage us at all. This is what I like to see, easy combat. Going after our pilot, I can get in there and take care of him. Going to shoot at their clone bay. Clone Bay, interesting. The Med Bay heals you. The Clone Bay brings dead crew members back to life. So you don't heal them individually. You just wait for them to die and then they come back at full health. We're going to shoot once at the Clone Bay and then give it a second. Wait for those flat cannon shots to about hit the shields and then shoot at their weapons. We missed the Clone Bay, but we did start a fire on board their ship. Now, this is a... I'm going to, I'm going to give you a mid-level, high-level pro strat here. Our crew member is currently getting hit by the rock member. Our other crew member is at full health. I can swap their positions by moving them out of the room, moving Nazia in, and then moving Dolan into the room, and they will swap places so that the uh, crew member who is at full health is going to be taking the hits. This means that I have the... Uh, I can keep them both alive longer in combat, and if I was invading an enemy ship, that would be very important to kind of be aware of. Now, I did kill their entire crew, which means if I can destroy their uh, clone bay, they are all dead. They won't be coming back to life. Good, they're dead, because the clone bay has now been destroyed. They want to surrender, uh, no thanks, they're dead. And we get a Hull Smasher Laser Mark II. Fan. Fantastic. This is a good weapon. Fires three shots, one damage each, 15 seconds to charge, slower than our other weapons, but if I can get the flak, the burst, and the hull laser going at the same time, we would be quite strong offensively. Now, we can't really do that right now. We kind of have to flee for our lives. But what I could do is pick up... One more, uh, no, let's, I don't have enough for one power, so I'm just going to go to the exit, divert all power to the engines, and try to make it out of this beacon alive. They have two missiles, holy cow. They're going to invade us, they're invading us in the weapons room, that's okay. Might have to micro my crew in and out to keep them healed, but... Hopefully I can at least take their uh, missile offline. Nope, their missile launcher. Oh, it did go offline. Good, good, good. They do have an ABS targeting us. We will have to, uh, or we will get hit by it pretty much. No way around it. Unless we dodge. We have a 40% chance of dodging. Our crew members are wounded. I have, I ha I have to get them healed up. I don't want them to, you know, die or something. So let's let them leave. Fire our weapons. The uh, We are going to get hit. We're going to get hit by the ASB and the missile. 
Okay, that's not that bad. They're laser fired. It missed, so I can turn... I can devote power to the medbay and the engines. Okay, we can jump. We are going to jump immediately to the next sector. Pirate or rock? Uh, I guess rock? Pirates are fine too. Why don't we go to the pirate sector? 